So another experiment that we do for laminar turbulent flows that is a classic picture is this like hot is a hot wire anemometer um, uh, experiment that you can do. And there's actually other ways to actually explicitly just measure velocity, right? Measuring velocity at certain points in a pipe. So this is right. This is um, it's a hot wire anemometer device. What it is is you. I think it's a, it's a thermal couple of some device that when you put it in there, it experiences um, a voltage difference. And it's a way to actually measure velocity at these points. Just like that. Um, so this is another sort of cool, like, right, look of something that happens based on velocities in the pipe or that Reynolds number. And this what happens is you take this measurement, you take it through like a signal processor, and then from there, it has to go to an oscilloscope, I believe, and then you get to a computer. You can look at the computer, and then you can observe right velocity like in real time. And it's a like, sort of a classic frame. But the look, but, but, but sort of the look you get when you make that measurement is for a laminar flow time, and then you really would have this change in velocity. But you take that potential difference and you turn it really into a, a, a velocity, right? And then each of these measurements is for a given point. So I just want to kind of stress this idea. You have to do this a bunch of times because I stick my probe in there and I measure one point. So here's my z-axis, here's my r, and I'm going up to an r naught value. So this graph corresponds to one measurement at one R naught value. And there's some difference here of energy. And what happens for a laminar flow is you just get a straight line. So this is the laminar case. Like on your computer, you're just going to read one constant value. And you have to do this for a bunch of them, right? So this is one measurement. You take a long enough time. There might be some steadiness after a long enough time. It really is just kind of a flat line when you do it a bunch of times. And then if you take all of these values here, so this would be like a U1, and you could do another one, and another one, another one, you would be able to then plot some um, profile of velocity. Like that, where each one of these points is something that you measured, and you realize that we're getting, when you was close to the wall, there was, there, there was no velocity at all, and that's a no slip type thing. And then you realize you got closer and closer to this zero point, in the radius, it was, it was getting bigger and bigger. And you also notice that it's a quadratic behavior where this is actually perfectly seems to be, right, some quadratic relationship based on R. But we'll get into that later, but just that's the look of what you do with these experiments when you measure a pipe flow. You would actually measure the velocity and do it a bunch of times and then create some sort of, right, some discrete graph that looks like a curve. And that's for laminar. But as that Reynolds number increased, you could just be at the exact same R not, and then what happened is this. The signal, right, it's just become, it comes quite chaotic, where I'm just measuring at one R not value, and as time goes along, this thing never really steadies out. But all you can say is that there's some mean velocity, and then there are fluctuations, which is called an R, a, a U prime. So that really then motivates this idea of right, modeling turbulence, where you just get a sense from looking at this thing, well, I'm just going to say that right, the velocity is a mean and a u prime. So this is right, the turbulent behavior, or the turbulent look of the flow, is this idea that when we did these measurements back in the day, we realized just this stark difference all based on that Reynolds number that we can calculate based on dimensions of the pipe. I mean, this is the diameter of the pipe in the fluid. I've, it has a viscosity and a density, which I can also measure independently. And then a velocity is based on some sort of flow rate, right? This is a volumetric flow rate, so I can prescribe two gallons per minute, et cetera. You know that flow rate, right, is cross-sectional area. That's constant times some characteristic velocity. So that gives you all the components to calculate this Reynolds number. Right? And I'm sure we all know this, right? Just it's nice to ex express the fact that if you do these experiments, all these things are things that you can get at. 
and you can quant calculate and you can realize you get this stark different behavior in the in the measurement graphs that you end up producing when you do these experiments so that troubled people a lot and we're going to look into how to model that